loser, eh? Didn't recognize me, did you? Whimper and Willy Whiskers. Greetings, everybody. And a fine how do you do? Did I put that away? Uh, yeah, I picked, uh, well, I didn't pick up here. I found, a, I've been going through a lot of my, uh, my collection and stuff like that. And I've been going to a lot of, uh, uh, mini flea markets and, uh, yard sales, garage sales. Most of those things have been failures, you know, except for one flea market. And uh, that I went to it was a local mini flea market at a nearby uh, public park, you know, in a school. And uh, so I got that on another camera, and I, I don't have the editing software up because I'm having problems with the hard drive, which I've been telling you about, and I haven't been able to get that thing uploaded yet. But anyway, I'm going to show you some of the stuff that I that I have that I found in my collection and other things that I got around here so uh, let's start out with something um, oh you know in the last video I kept I kept saying that this what was the f oh for crying out loud I bet you that Stan Lee calling me again I'm not answering it. He can call me later on. Um, I was mentioning about uh, the fact that this was uh, the first Silver Age appearance of uh, Black Adam. But I, I said like Silver Age three times. And it's not. I mean, you know, this is 1970. What does it say that? 77? Night, yeah, uh, March, March, April 1977. So, I mean, that can't be this, that's no longer the Silver Age, it's the Bronze Age. And I said Silver Age three times, and you know what? I depend a lot, you know, on this, on the, uh, the price guide. This is like an encyclopedia, the Overstreet price guide. It's got so much information in there, it's unbelievable. It's an essential book, but you can't always depend on everything what you read in here, everything what's printed. You can't trust it. They refer to uh, they refer to this. This is number uh, twenty-eight, Shazam twenty-eight. First Silver Age appearance of Black Adam, and that's probably where I got that from. The idea of the Silver Age. Even though I'm looking at this, I know it's not the Silver Age. It's 1977. Uh, anyway. So I wanted to clear that up. Somebody uh, sent me this book. This is Justice League number 30. And... Uh, they're giving me a full refund and told me to keep the book because, well, he said he's giving me a full refund. I haven't gotten it yet, but uh, that was just, you know, yesterday. But the reason why he's giving me a full refund, he feels bad about it because he said there was a tear in the front cover, which was in the description. You can see it right here, that tear right there. Now that was in the description, I knew about this, but the thing is, it goes all the way through the whole freaking book. Look at that. It goes all the way through the whole freaking book. So I, I contacted him, I said, what the hell's going on? You said it was just on the front, you know, a one inch tear on the, on the lower front cover, and it turns out that it's going through like the entire book. So he said, yes, I, he, he, uh, he knew it when he was putting the package together. He realized that, and then he got so busy he forgot about it and mailed it anyway. 
but he said I can keep the book and he's going to give me a full refund. So I don't know whether to believe the guy or not, but regardless, you know, that, uh, yeah, that was uh, number 30, Justice League number 30. I, I don't know what year that is. That would be uh, 60, probably 63, 64. And, all right, here's something else. This is the first, uh, again, I think Overstreet <laughs> is referring to this as the, uh, no, this time he doesn't. This time they're careful. This is the first, the, the first appearance of Captain Marvel since the Golden Age. Since the Golden Age. But this is in... Oh, the Lord of Mercy. I mean, I remember buying this. I had several copies, and I can't even find them. 1973. I mean, so depending on your uh, view, and there is some controversy about when the Silver Age ended. I think it's, you know, ended like 70, 71. Maybe some, maybe it's even possible it ended in 69. Some people say it ended with... Uh, uh, first appearance of Wolverine, Hulk, you know, 181, but, you know, and then other people, just, you know, they tell you, well, that's not the first appearance of the Wolverine, first appearance of Wolverine was in 180. And then other people will tell you, well, no, that's not the first appearance of Wolverine. Wolverine appeared before that in ads in Daredevil and Thor. A couple months before he appeared in, you know, 180. Just ridiculous. And then they were asking outrageous prices because there's an ad in there with Wolverine in it. Oh, Lord of mercy. We're just we're going crazy here. Uh, here is... Oh. I think I found you this, did I? Oh, I did show you this in the other uh, couple videos ago. This is what I showed you the uh, Apocalypse storyline and Justice League. This is a big appearance of uh, uh, on the cover of Dar uh, Dark Seed. I mean, uh, <laughs> Dark Seed. <laughs> Dark Side. The Dark Side. And uh, look what I found. In my box of Justice League comics, I found another copy of that. I gotta rebag and board this stuff. Justice League 184, dark side cover. Here's a uh, Justice League 110, 1973. This is a key issue because it's. It's the murder of Santa Claus. They murdered Santa Claus in here. Now, if that can't be a key issue, what is? The murder of Santa Claus? I'm just loving these 100-page spectaculars. I mean, can you imagine, you know, for 50 cents? But it's not the first time, you know, that uh, we've had 100-page spectaculars. It goes all the way back to the 39, 1940, when they had the first, uh, uh, I think it was New York World's Fair. Uh, they had 100-pagers there, and they were, I think, uh, 15 cents or what a quarter. I can't remember. Fifth, I think 15 cents. Um, here is one, and by this time they're already, that was 50 cents, now they're 60 cents. This is uh, Justice League 112. Boy, my shoulders are killing me from the arthritis. Wow. Um, I don't know if this has a, yeah, it has a new story in it. 
These were great because they usually had one new story and then backed up by the reprints. It was just beautiful, man. I mean, the only problem with these uh, big, you know, giant sized books, whether they're, you know, 100 pages or whether they're 64 pages or 52 pages, is the, uh, the square binding, you know. It's very difficult to find these in perfect perfect square binding it's just very hard and when they are in perfect square binding they usually go for hefty prices which I think is unfair I don't think it's real. oh crap I didn't even know this was in here holy moly it's another copy this one I picked up recently uh, Justice League 184. Oh, here's another uh, copy of uh, Justice League 110, The Murder of Santa Claus. And uh, this is a, most of these were done by, the covers were done by Nick Cardi. Nick Cardi was uh, another underrated artist, and uh, I love his work, especially on Aquaman. That is also a Nick Cardi cover. And next up here, we got a uh, Justice League 111. Try to stay close to the microphone. I don't want to block the microphone because then you know you can't hear me properly. Properly, everybody says I've been mumbling lately. I gotta start uh, quitting that stuff. Oh, what is this? Is it? Well, it's, it's uh, this is one sixteen. They all look. The covers look so. F Looks so uh, similar. I might have shown this, and I might have shown another one. I think this is what I showed you uh, a couple videos ago. This pile right here. Let me see if that's in there. Secret Wars. No, I guess I showed you 115. Hmm. Oh wait, here. There's another copy of that. Maybe I did show this already. But different book. Oh, I got so many doubles with all this stuff. Ooh, and this I got from my comic shop. This is Weird Mystery, number one. And, uh, the, uh, sorry, the cover on this one is by it. It looks like the Crap. I I didn't write nothing in the back, so I'm not I think this looks like Mike Kaluta. The signature there. I think that's his handwriting style, Mike Kaluta. I'm pretty sure that's Mike Kaluta. A Mike Kaluta cover. And uh something 
I was talking about uh, the 100 page spectaculars in, a, another, in a couple of videos ago and this, I showed you this, I have a few of these now. Um, this is a 100 page spectacular, this is the first 100 page spectacular issue even though it says number 4 up here and my theory is that they somehow because they decided that the first 100 page spectacular was going to be a weird mystery tale tales that they decided to start the numbering with number four and just just continue from you know weird mystery number four but you know weird mystery had had its own number four i don't know if i let me see if i have it here i don't even maybe i do maybe i don't oh yeah okay i got a bunch of weird mysteries here to show you that i picked up Here's Weird Mystery number four. The real Weird Mystery Tales number four. And a lot of, a lot of guys when they bought this, they thought it was, you know, Weird Mystery Tales number four. And then later on they realized, wow, this is a, you know, 100 page spectacular, but it has nothing to do with mere, you know, the title is totally separate from weird mystery tales bernie writes in cover on this from 1971 end of the silver age um the thing is i don't think that they wanted to give it a number one because they uh there was no room you know in the newsstands you know distributors you know, would have been afraid to uh uh get this out to the newsstands because they wouldn't carry it because it's so so big and there were so many comics out taking up space as it is and you know the comics at that at that point were 15 cents and here's something that's 50 cents 50 cents and who's you know what kid is going to buy it so they figure well we'll put a number four on there and pretend it's weird mystery tales number four or something and then this way, uh, everybody will think it's an established book already, and that I already sold three copies, and then they'll be able to, you know, won't have to worry about getting it on the newsstands. So anyway, that's that's my take on it, but I could be wrong. It's anybody's guess. I think that the people that have that would have uh, been able to tell us something, like it said in that back issue uh, uh, magazine, back issue 81, I was reading about the 100 pages in there. You know, most of the people that died that would have been able to tell us exactly what what the uh, rationale was for putting a number four on there. But here is uh, Shazam number eight. Oh, you know, th this reprints... I think these are all reprints. C.C. Beck did the original cover on it. Uh, but what's good about this book, or what might be considered a minor, might be considered a minor key, is because this has the uh, the first golden a uh, the first appearance of Black Adam since the golden age but it's a reprint of his original first appearance in the golden age <laughs> yet this is what i'm talking about and yet they're calling it a key issue because the second time that black adam ever appeared i mean the real time that second black adam ever appeared in the comic book again because in 1945 he appeared in a one shot called you know the marvel family number one and uh, he was never seen again until till there, till this book, and it and all this book does is reprint that same story again. I and the charging, you know, it's an, to me. I don't know how else to explain it. It's an artificially inflated price for this book. 
it's not a real key, you know. I mean, and, and speaking of the, uh, the actual, oh, brother, it gets so damn confusing, you know. Um, what is that? Where did I just, I'm getting, I'm getting confused here. Lord, help me. Gimpy, where are you? They're calling this the second appearance of Black Adam. It's the, and I kept saying Silver Age is the first Bronze Age appearance. But, uh, this is uh, 1977, and then I got the DC Comics Presents number 49. I just came across these the other day from in my collection. I had them in there already, so let's take a look here. 1982. Okay, so this will be the uh, the third appearance. Or in a fourth appearance of Black Adam, depending on your view. So there you go. I got all the uh, appearances. Black Adam here. Except the original Golden Age appearance. And I, I, no, I don't have that. Marvel Family number one. But uh, here's the first Bronze Age appearance of... Uh, You know what? I'm just going to tell you the overall appearances. First appearance was 1945. Uh, second appearance was in this, from the, uh, Shazam number 8 from 1973, in the form of a reprint of the original from 1945. That was a second appearance there. Third overall appearance right here. And then the fourth appearance. And if I'm wrong, I don't give a hell hootin' tootin' holler. Well, it's turning into a long video. Oh, look at this. I picked this up from... Oh, who did I get this from? I forgot, man. Oh, lordy, lordy. I think it's from... Uh, the Joe Koch warehouse that uh, I knew about Joe Koch for a long, long time, but forgot all about him until I was watching Tony Why Not Art. One of his videos, his earlier videos, he did a a, a, a walkthrough of the Joe Koch warehouse, and you got to check out Tony Why Not Art, his channel. Man, he he's got some great stuff there, and he had. Uh, Uploaded a couple of videos where he takes you on tour of the Joe Koch warehouse, and I think this came from there. What a beautiful cover! Look at that Satana snake. Kind of reminds you of that uh, Doctor Strange, you know, 169. This might have been inspired. This cover might have been, you know, been inspired by Doc Strange 169. Hold on, I gotta have a beer. I gotta have a beer. I have no other enjoyment in life. Constant pain all the time, unless I take Narcos. Oh! Oh, that's so good. Oh, my back itches, man. You thought that was a rake, didn't you? Okay, what else I got here? Weird Mystery Tales number three. <clears throat> number three. 
number five. Oh, number six. Who did the cover here? Let's see if it's signed. I love this cover. I like any kind of cover with uh, the uh, figures of figure of death. Oh, there's number eight. Nothing on the back that indicates who did this cover. I don't know all the covers. This is a great cover. Uh, although this is a low grade, you know, this is like a good plus. This to me is a reading copy. She's half woman, half insect. Half insect half-naked woman. I like the way you know, they uh, got a little, they, they show her her booby right there, but there's no nipple on the damn thing. <laughs> Who ever heard of a booby without a nipple? Speaking of boobies, I don't know why I have to have them damn boobies. And you know what? I don't understand why men have nipples. Oh, Weird Mystery Tales number two. Titanic cover. Key issue because it's showing the sinking of the Titanic. First time on a comic book. Ooh. Where I got two copies of it. I'm just kidding, man. You know, I'm being sarcastic and making fun of all that stuff. You know, I get ridiculous. Did I show you this? Number four? I can't remember. Weird Mystery Tales number four. Yes, I did. Of course I showed it to you. Here's Weird Mystery Tales number one again. I know I showed it to you, but there it is again. And of course, I'll show you number four again. Great Bernie Wrightson cover. Let me get my fingers out of there. Oh, that hurts my shoulders when I do this really bad. Number four. All reprints in this one. I don't think there's any new stories in here at all, but it's got a great cover by Bernie Wrightson. Okie dokie then. Yeah, this has gone on long enough. Oh, well, I got a postcard from Corey. He's in Florida, Key West. I bet you guys never got a postcard. Anyway, okay, fellas, and mm, fellers, and mm, fellerets, fellerets. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks for subbing, and uh, I will. Uh, <laughs> I keep saying this, but this might be the last video for just a little while until I get my hard drive replaced because I'm so scared of doing that. I mean, I don't know. Something's going to fail and go wrong. But if it does, I'll just borrow somebody else's computer and upload a video from there somehow. Anyway, thanks for watching, and everybody live long, be well. See you again next time.